Good evening. My name is Patrick Flanagan. And first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. I want to thank the Thai Talks organizers for putting on this evening. Um, I'm very happy to be here and be able to talk to you. And tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about the role of personal relationships in sustainable community development. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to start out with a little bit about my life, about where I'm from, um, how I became involved with community development, what it means to me, and what I think will make it effective. So first off, I am from Hope Valley, Rhode Island. It is a small town of about 1,800 people in southern Rhode Island. I attended Bishop Hendrickon High School, an all-male Catholic school in Warwick, Rhode Island. And it was really at Bishop Hendrickon that I first gained an appreciation for community development and volunteering in the community. I knew that when I left Hendrickon that I wanted to continue to give back to the community in any way possible. And when I visited the University of Alabama, I learned that civic engagement is one of the four pillars of the Honors College. This is really attractive to me as it meant that the University of Alabama wasn't just about football and grades, but it was actually about giving back to those around us. So when I decided to come here, my first week in Alabama was spent doing Black Belt Action, which is a week-long program working in Marion, Alabama, and put on through 57 miles, which is really the backbone of everything that I know about community development and what will make community development possible. So first off, 57 Miles works in Perry County, Alabama, which is one of the 13 counties of the Black Belt. The Black Belt is a region in Alabama known traditionally for its dark, rich soil, which led to great prosperity in the mid-1800s. However, this prosperity was generally on the backs of slave labor. With the abolition of slavery, a whole population emerged that was neglected in every way possible. They had no opportunities for education and there was no opportunity for social mobility. Thus, over decades and generations, it is now one of the most impoverished regions in the United States. The 57 Miles program tries to work to do something for Marion in the, in the areas of community engagement, education, economic development, and healthcare. All the programs that we've run, whether it's in the high school or working with the elementary school or running service days, are for these, purpose, for these purposes. And now I've worked with them for the last year and a half, and I've learned that to do this effectively, it comes down to four main points. And these four points are when you go into a community, you have to have a historical knowledge of the different aspects of that community. And then to create change, you must be collaborating with community members. By doing this, you are forming tr strong personal relationships with these community members to achieve the long-term goals and initiatives. And now I want to break this down even further to, for the historical knowledge of the community, first off, you have to understand that every community, every place you go, every different region of the United States has its own culture. And coming from Rhode Island to Alabama, is a, there's a culture shock there. And just for a small example of coming from Rhode Island to Marion, if I go to church at home, it is very common to see people wearing shorts or a bathing suit if you're close enough to the beach and it's nice out, or a Patriots jersey during the fall. However, if you were to go into Marion wearing a Patriots jersey, that would be seen as disrespectful entirely. And that would hinder your ability to actually form a personal relationship with a member of the community. And they won't want, they will view you as being disrespectful to their ways and they won't believe that you are working for them. On another point, if you're working for economic development and you're doing this through business enterprise, then you need to identify that there are some practices, there are some business opportunities that are good for the community and then there are some that are not. For example, in one um, city in the Black Belt right now, there is a business that is opening that is a specialty coffee shop. However, it is going to be very hard for that business to actually do anything for the community if 
they're selling avocado toast when the members of the community have trouble buying their groceries. So in order to actually do this, you have to be collaborating with the community members to identify their needs. Community members know more about where they are from than you ever will, and they will be able to identify where they have weaknesses and how you will be able to give your resources and your time and effort into trying to make a difference in those areas. As well as doing that, there are always going to be organizations and people within those communities who are already working in some way for that, Diver diverting as many resources as they have and by working together through um, forming those positive relationships, you'll compound on each other and effective change will continue to happen. This really all boils down to the personal relationship building, where by doing this through a, an internal presence in the community and coming down to the community as often as possible, interacting with everybody, not just in terms of going down for a service day once every few months or um, going and eating at their local barbecue place, although Willard's in Marion is a high quality establishment. Um, it's through interacting with people in their everyday lives. It is understanding what makes them tick. You have to have a trust and understanding among everybody that you're all working for the shared common goal of developing their community. By doing this and showing that you care and developing these relationships, you show that other people outside the community want to do something for them. And this creates a sense of pride within the community where members will then see what you're doing and want to be able to help. This help will translate to potentially them taking over the projects that you're doing and being able to run it themselves. And then you will, be ha then you will have the opportunity to expand those projects and move to a new area that also needs help. But for that purpose, you need to have the long-term goals and initiatives, and they have to be sustainable, transferable, and adaptable, where your resources have to be such that the projects that you're starting have to be able to be sustained over as long a time as possible, such that the people within the community will be able to take over and continue to run those projects. Additionally, they have to be adaptable, where personnel changes constantly, especially at the university, where 57 Miles has a constant rotating um, change of personnel as there are four interns right now. Next year, only one of us is going to be coming back as either we are graduating or moving to another position on campus. So the projects that we are running now have to be structured in a way that the people coming in will be working with this. So as we went through this of the historical knowledge, the collaboration, the personal relationships, and then long-term goals, it all presupposes that we actually have people willing to do the work. And now that comes down to you, it comes down to me, where we have to take action. And coming to the University of Alabama is not just about gaining an education. Your education is not just self-serving as you are looking to get the best job possible and make the most money you can. But what it's for is to be able to use it for those around you, to give back to those and work with them and learn about your community. To come from Rhode Island to Alabama and learn about the intricacies of Tuscaloosa and the intricacies of uh, Marion, what makes it unique. And can you just imagine what we can do if 37,000 students at the University of Alabama actually truly cared and learned about the community and worked within their community? Forming these relationships will then lead to effective, sustainable community development. Thank you very much.